Uh, President Trump hating GOP Senator Mittens Romney joining Democrats in criticizing President Trump's decision to commute Roger Stone's prison sentence. Romney tweeting, quote, unprecedented historic corruption, an American president commutes the sentence of a person convicted by a jury of lying to shield that very president. Here to react, former acting U.S. Attorney General, Cloud Public Affairs Managing Director and author of Above the Law, Matt Whitaker. Matt, good morning to you. Thanks for taking time. A lot of reactions to Friday's commutation for Stone. What do you make of Senator Romney's criticism? Well, I, I think what happened with Roger Stone's commutation uh, and the reaction is exactly what you would expect. The people that don't like President Trump are going to criticize him, as they always do. Uh, and President Trump, in spite of that, is going to do what he thinks is right. And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the type of leadership we've come to expect from this president and what I saw being in his cabinet. You know, Matt, Democrats, we expect, I mean, and even with Mitt Romney, I mean, he travels with Democrats these days, we're, we're, are, are to be expected uh, to be blasting the president for commuting this sentence, calling an abuse of power. But then we've been, we've been putting up this pesky statistic uh, all morning long about the record of commutations between President Trump and President Obama. If you look at the numbers, President Trump's actually 11 now if you count uh, Roger Stone. Barack Obama, 1,715. Let's not forget Bill Clinton uh, pardoned his brother and his business partner, Mark Rich. Uh, so what is out of step with what the president's doing, especially when you look at that Barack Obama number? Yeah, there's not there's nothing, Pete. Uh, what what's happening um, in this reaction is is folks trying to score cheap political points. But, you know, let's remember the president has broad constitutional powers, as you mentioned earlier today. And, you know, he considered Mr. Stone's age, his health. The COVID risk that's very, you know, prevalent and currently in our prisons, together with, you know, the perceived, uh, you know, bias of the prosecutors and the jury in Mr. Stone's um, conviction and prosecution. So I, I think, you know, the, the, this president has used his constitutional powers uh, sparingly. He's looked at cases where he feels that a fairness, a fundamental fairness, um, has not been done, and he tries to right those wrongs. And so I would expect, as this president continues to serve, in this role, uh, that he will grant other pardons, commutations, and other executive uh, clemency um, as as he sees fit. And you know what? That's the way the Constitution is written, Pete. And 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 mm -hmm. really, I think the criticism, to some extent, is unfounded. Matt, let's shift over to a letter written by 12 Republican lawmakers, if you don't mind. It was written to Attorney General Barr. And it was written in defense of the Second Amendment uh, related to the rights of that Missouri couple, Mark and Patricia McCloskey, who, remember, they had to defend their home from protesters. Many were outraged by the fact that they stood there on their own property um, with guns. And they were saying, well, why were they doing that? What do you make of it and what do you make of the letter that was being written to Barr? Yeah, I think it is a good reminder that the Department of Justice and the federal government often stands as the last line of defense to protect our fundamental constitutional rights, whether that's our freedom of expression and our, our rights to worship and, and or whether it's our Second Amendment constitutional rights uh, to bear arms. And so what you saw happen in St. Louis with this gr gun grab uh, by the prosecutor and the police, I think, is uh, unnecessary. These folks were legitimately defending their property against a mob that they had no idea where it had come from. It appeared to be uh, possibly violent. And so I think to some extent, you know, we look at what happened in St. Louis and a lot of Americans uh, would use their, their guns to also protect their house. And I think that's a very legitimate use. And so we need to um, be concerned what's happening in St. Louis and know that the Department of Justice and the federal government should possibly step in in this situation to defend these folks' uh, fundamental constitutional rights. Well, Matt, and just oh, in the ahead. seconds we've got left, actually, I just want to pick up on that. What, what, what can they do? What does it look like? Well, I mean, they could, you know, fundamentally f uh, file a constitutional claim uh, against mm -hmm. this prosecutor. Uh, you know, there's there's really a, a, a lot of power in the federal government to make sure that folks' fundamental constitutional rights aren't infringed. And so I think they're watching it very carefully. I remember Jeff Jensen is the U.S. attorney in St. Louis. Uh, he's the one that uh, was involved in uh, making sure General Flynn's case uh, was done appropriately and ultimately dismissed. And so I think I think the federal government is watching this very carefully. Yeah, it's St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kimberly Gardner, who has been a part of potentially going after this couple, uh, seizing a rifle ultimately in a raid.
Uh, and Matt, thanks for giving us an update on it. Matt Whitaker, appreciate your time. All right, thanks, Thank Matt. Thank you.